what's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day, ah, uh, yes, list day. And today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 best flavor texts in the game of Yugi Mans. The best thing about normal monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh isn't all their fun support, nor is it the fact that they're just reliable beat sticks, no, it's the flavor text because uh, they don't have effects. So instead of just being blank under their monster typing, they have fun little lores, which is cool because people like lore. Except Data, he didn't like lore. <laughs> you make me wish I were an only child. I am so old. It almost makes me wish effect monsters had lore on them too because like other card games can have monsters that do things and also have flavor text, but whatever, Yu-Gi-Oh can't have anything nice. But anyway, let's get started. Number 10, Psyframe Driver. Level six light psychic monster with 2,500 attack and zero defense. I was gonna say what do, but uh, nothing is the answer to that question. This thing's flavor text says, A psychic soldier that rides into battle against the security forces, capitalized, on currents of lightning, using an automatic amplifier named Psyframe. What's interesting about this one is it kind of describes how the card works. It is just a vanilla, but it is summoned alongside one of the Psyframe cards in order to hand trap your opponent against things like monster effects, spells, and traps. But my favorite part about this thing's flavor text is it sounds like a synopsis for one of those, like, rip-off Transmorphers movies. <laughs> Abort mission. Repeat. Abort mission. Transmorphers. Also, Security Forces is in capitals. I'd like to know, what's the deep lore about that? Is this guy uh, fighting against those dudes that were always chasing Yusei around? Is that is that this, is that the name of that? Is this anime lore? Probably not. Honestly, you could make the argument that it's flavor text is just kind of lazy. Yeah, because it's just describing its non-existent effect. Sure. Number nine, Magic Key Sky Blaster. Clavis. Clavis? Cletus, the slack-jawed yokel. Like Cletus, the slack-jawed yokel. Hey, what's going on on this side? Little Four Dark Warrior Monster, 1900 attack, 1900 defense. Neat, it's, it's even. All right, this one. This one's flavor text says, everyone is full of possibilities. Everything you do, moving forwards, stopping, closing, opening, is all in your hands. There are many doors in this world. To open them requires the magic key. Two keys, one door. Two wills, one, Two wills, one body. Um, phrasing? Once the doors are opened, the worlds will be connected and the greater power will be revealed. Okay, uh, they had me in the first half, not gonna lie. The first part of this thing sounds like a damn Shia LaBeouf motivational speech. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Everyone is full of possibilities. So just do it! Except if it's actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf, then everyone is full of meat. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. And then, uh, and then it, and then it starts talking about two keys, one door. Alexandroid Dragon. Level four light dragon monster, a classic. 2000 attack, 100 defense. Ah, it's one of the classic 2K level four beat sticks. Remember when the power ceiling was Lao Jin, Mystical Genie of the Lamp, and then Gemini Elf, and then that was it? Man, the times have changed. <laughs> the times changed like 20 years ago. I, will, I am so old! This one's flavor text says, Many of the Tsar's lost jewels can be found in the scales of this priceless dragon. Its creator remains a mystery, along with how they acquired the Imperial treasures. But whoever finds this dragon has hit the jackpot, whether they know it or not. Ooh. All right, so this thing was made by Rasputin. Is that what I'm supposed to believe? <laughs> you know, it's 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 better that this thing is the Tsar's dragon instead of Catherine's horse. Stop it! All right, so this thing is this thing's got the Tsar's family jewels. That's a bad dragon right there. Um, what's the matter with you? You got something yet? Hey, oh. oh. A lot to unpack in this card's lore. Uh, is this actually Anastasia? Is, is this the lost princess? 
I remember when I was a kid and that movie came out, I had a, a little, like, a little model train that you got at, like, Burger King. And I thought it was really cool because it was a pretty sophisticated toy for Burger King. <laughs> I wonder if I still got that somewhere. Number seven, Evil Swarm Heliotrope. Level four, Dark Rock Monster, 1950 attack, 650 defense. Nothing quite like Evil Swarms being such jerks that their attack stats make mental math impossible. <laughs> and its flavor text is doozy, cause it's written backwards. Oh boy. Eliminate, eradicate, exterminate. Exterminate. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Nope, that's not what it says. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girls. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction, Chemical X. <laughs> These are the thoughts of lingering Steel Swarm souls. Because the evil swarms are like the Steel Swarm 2 electric boogaloo. Dual terminal lore. Yearning for a body. Why are all these so horny? So that they might make their dream into a reality. Don't let your dreams be dreams! So just do it! Make them meat instead. <laughs> but yes, this is completely written backwards. I wish I knew or cared enough about the dual terminal lore to tell you as to why. I imagine it's because they're aliens or whatever, or evil spirit things, and this is just their spooky way of speaking. Kind of like Zatanna, uh, when she speaks backwards to do her spells. Alright, here we go, Wat Tail Dragon. Level 6, Light Dragon Monster, 2500 attack, and 1000 defense. Woo, here's a classic one. His flavor text is a reference to like Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> like as as a game. Capable of indefinite flight, attacking by wrapping its body with electricity and ramming into its opponents. Just ramming them! <laughs> Why are they all so horny? Important, it comes with a warning label. Capturing the Wattel Dragon is forbidden by the ancient rules and is a level six offense. The minimum sentence of which is 2,500 helio cycles. Helio cycle. Is that gear? Is that a year? Like is helio meaning the sun? So you are indefinitely in prison, much like this thing can indefinitely fly. Ha 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 ha. Number five, Cleaford Scout or Monolith, but we're gonna go with Scout. It doesn't really matter. This thing, as a pendulum monster, doesn't just have flavor text, but it also has an effect, which we don't care about because that's not the point of the video. But like, I don't know, insert joke about the cost in which to use its effect. Flavor text says, booting in replica mode, an error has occurred while executing c slash sophia zephra dot exe. Unknown publisher, allow c terra clefort dot exe? Yes or no? Booting in autonomy mode. It, it's like code, cause it's a robot machine thing. And it's like processing its 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 ability uh, and asking its its a like its user to, if it doesn't want to release the, the, the evil uh, infernoid that is in it, I guess. It looks like it was written by Hacker Typer. <laughs> oh. That's, you know, that's how the Cleaforts were written, by the way, they just, they just Screen grabs him hacker typer. I better ask Ryan to help me with this one because uh, it, it's very clearly having some sort of error and turning it on and off again did not help. So I'm at a loss at this point. <laughs> no problem. Next day. Number four, Vanilla. Vanilla. Level one, Earth Beast Monster, 150 attack and 2,000. 50 defense. Ah. Amanda's note here says, oh, I think he's cute and I don't care at all. Who knows it? <laughs> Cause he's a rabbit. This rabbit's got a sweet tooth. He's on a quest for the world's sweetest carrot and just wants to nibble carrots all day, tomorrow and the day after that. Oh, he is cute. I know he's only number four, but for me, I think he wins. 
but just by a hair. He had a good jump on the competition, being that he is so cute. Although, competitively speaking, the card was kind of a flop. I, I could keep going, but we really should hop to it. <laughs> yes! You're a real check! Rip it! Man, let's get out of here. Word to your mother. Number three, Holo Holo. Ah yes, Holo Holo. My favorite of which was the promotional Holo Holo that you got when you went to the sneak peek. It was an ultra rare, so you had a Holo Holo Holo. Holo Holo Holo. <laughs> <laughs> Level 3 Dark Fiend Pendulum Monster. Two on its pendulum scale, 800 attack, and I don't know, 600 defense. This pendulum effect is freaking terrible. Uh, you can roll a die, target a monster, and change its level. Uh, it would be the result of the die. That is uh, kind of funny, but it, it's bad. But nah, it's, it's flavor text is a poem, and it's, again, super cute, which is why it's on the list, because cute is, cute pulls a lot of weight here. Hollow Hollow, Brain of Talo. Guts are gone. Noggin's hollow. Seeking sweets and marshing mellows. Watch your back and your candy sack. He just wants to eat candy. He's gonna steal from trick-or-treaters. Oh, he's cute. You can also do Zombino here. It's uh, it's flavor text is a haiku, which is super cute, but I erased it out of my script, so I'm not gonna read it. So Ryan's gonna put it on the screen here. The two are so close. They die and return to life. Inseparable. Number two, Melfi Rabby. Ah, uh, a second bunny. We couldn't have just one cute bunny on this list. We had to have two cute bunnies. Because for some reason, uh, Konami likes bunnies. I, I don't know why. Are they like moon bunnies? Like Sailor Moon? Are, are Melfi's just a, a, a second times removed Sailor Moon reference? Is Melfi Rabby Sailor Moon? I mean, it's pink. It could be Mini Moon. And that makes Melfi Mommy Sailor Moon? Pancakes. Anyway, this one has zero attack and uh, 2100 defense. That's pretty high. Melfi, Melfi Rabby's got a big booty for some reason. Rabby's up on that favorite stump again, looking all around the forest at all of the fluffy friends. Do you like exploring too? Good. Let's go find more Melfi friends with Rabby. It's kind of like the intro to some like PBS kids show. Rabbi's on that stump again, looking around at all his friends. <laughs> Do you like exploring too good? It's just around the band. <laughs> Where are you going? I don't know. How'd we get there? Come on, let's go. <laughs> it's me and you and Zabuma Foo. Come along and see what's new. I'm sorry that I was torturing you. Shh. Ryan's gonna leave that whole thing in, isn't he? He's absolutely doing that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, honorable mention is got to be the one, the only, Neko Gal number one. And why is that? Well, uh, here at the Dave Nader 1212 channel, we respect the low hanging fruit. And in this case, that low hanging fruit is the Pussy Fairy. <laughs> um, phrasing? Seriously? Horny Pussy Fairy? That's the joke. <laughs> That's. <laughs> That's the joke. It was eroded to Pussy Cat Fairy because she is Neko Gale, you know, Neko like cat. I mean, of course it was. Why wasn't it like that to begin with? I do not know. It's like this is your first experience with the English language. <laughs> um, a bunch of immature, probably male uh, players of this game. Yeah, that sounds like 90% of my, my viewership. Yeah, would probably laugh at this. You're all a bunch of children. And here I am, <laughs> 33. Laughing at Pussy Fairy 2. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and today's dishonorable mention is Mech Knight Avram. Because they went from his interesting Japanese OCG text, which explains his card lore. The hero who defends the light of the stars must destroy the darkness of the illusory world and entrust his power to the chosen one. The will inherited by the chalice of the stars will become a new key and become the sword that cuts down darkness. It got changed to, check this out. Sorry, check this out. Check what out, Avram? Ib dying? Is that what we're checking out? <laughs> See, this one I actually know. I played Master Duels. Anyway, number one is Sue Ship Shari. Yes, two ships. Level four, Aquafire Monster. 2,000 attack, 
zero defense. What about fire kraken, Dave? What about fire kraken? Sioux ships are simultaneously both one of the most funny and cleverly designed archetypes in this game, and also one of the worst. Holy crap, is this thing bad? The, all their boss monsters stink. <laughs> Please, uh, Sioux ship stands, write your angry comments in the section below. I could use the engagement. But anyway, what's this thing's flavor text? It's a Yelp review. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. And it had this to say. I finally got to visit the harbor specializing in gunkin' Sioux ships that I've been curious for a while. The premium Shari here is limited to 2,000 Sioux ships a year and uses specifically developed smooth aged rice, giving it an extra boldness not found anywhere else. The classy atmosphere made my heart sing too. The gunkin' Sioux ship served had a perfect balance of vinegar, nigiri, shine, and shape demonstrating exquisite artisanship artisanship ships the owner told me we are introducing a rich yet mellow second edo front red vinegar in the near future which i'm really looking forward to however i was disappointed that the surrounding seas were a little noisy so i'm giving it four stars with hope for improvements in the future okay first of all it's very funny that the the food based archetypes flavor text is a yelp review it is also funny that it is a four-star review on a four-star monster. Considering Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters are out of 12, a four-star review is actually terrible. <laughs> that is less than 50%. Unless, of course, we're assuming this is a five-star review, then in which case this guy is deducting points from the restaurant due to the fact that the ocean is noisy. That is a really, really, really shitty thing to take a star off for. They have no control over that. What do you expect them to do? Put up giant sound blocking walls? <laughs> We're gonna build the wall, we have no choice. So what, so you can't sit ocean no more? Like, what's the point of having an oceanfront sushi joint if you can't sit an ocean? Anyway, that was the list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did for some reason, more than I probably should have. I think I'm just excited to get this done because there's pizza upstairs and I'm starving. <laughs> so I'm getting bungee. <laughs> anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and I will see you guys next time.